Hi again. In this session, we'll continue our discussion on uh, the design issues related to social protection. And uh, because it's very important, the exclusion and inclusion error, because they're very important, we'll look at it in one segment, a quick segment, just to understand what we mean by uh, exclusion and inclusion error. So uh, I wanted you first to think of this example. Think about, you know, like how the court system operates. The court system, you know, like an individual either is innocent or committed a crime, right? So the individual either is innocent or a co committed a crime. Then the court either acquits the individual, you know, it's not, uh, find the, uh, acquits the individual, not enough evidence to conclude that the individual uh, committed the crime. So yes, they acquits the individual or they uh, find enough evidence to conclude that the individual committed the crime. And this is like in just in the court system, what you would expect here is you might have an error in this year, but let's look at the decision is correct, right? It's the correct that an individual is innocent and the court uh, acquits the individual or the individual committed uh, indeed the crime. So this is the reality, the individual committed indeed the crime and the court system was, was uh, able to establish enough evidence to conclude that the individual committed the crime. So this is the good, uh, you know, like if everything works well. But you know that you might end up with two errors here. The first error is that the individual did indeed, uh, the individual uh, is innocent, right? The individual is innocent. And the court uh, actually f uh, concluded that the individual uh, committed the crime. So the individual is innocent. He's honest when he uh, 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 says innocent, but the, they make the wrong decision that they sent him to jail, right? This is one. So they didn't uh, acquit him. This one error. The second error is the uh, individual is actually uh, not innocent. However, the, uh, like the court was not able to establish enough evidence to conclude that the individual commit the crime, so they acquits, uh, acquit the individual, the court acquits the individual, right? So these two errors. Wanted you to think about it now, which one is worse? Like, th think about it in, you might stop me so you can think about it, which one is worse? What I think is, I mean, it's uh, in, let's say, in modern uh, understanding, you know, like the worst case is this one, right? It is much worse to send an individual that never, uh, an innocent individual to prison. It's much worse than acquitting, uh, an, uh, 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 acquitting an individual who indeed commit the crime, acquitting a criminal. And this is the, you know, like the error that a, a judge will make would prefer to make this error over this error. So because of this, we, I'll, I'll give it, you know, like this is a serious error here. You, uh, it's a very serious, you know, we'd feel horribly bad when, if, when we hear a story that somebody spent 20 years or 30 years in prison for a crime he never committed, right? We feel bad, obviously, that somebody ran away with, uh, but at least, you know, because we always, we know, like the presumption of innocence is established uh, in, 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 you know, like modern uh, uh, societies, like uh, presumption of innocence. And this is because of this one is severe, uh, severe, uh, uh, severe, uh, uh, error. Many, like the idea here in uh, in statistics, if we carry this discussion to statistics, they assign what's called a type 1 error, type 2 error. And type 1 error is the worst error. You need think about it in the example I brought that example, just some, hopefully it will stay in your mind for a long time. So the type 1 error is something serious right? in any, like if you are in biological uh, field, you know, like a type 1 error, you need to control not to accept a medication or a vaccine unless it's uh, like, uh, like the margin of error is so minimized and this is the margin of error you want to minimize. So again, type 1 error is what you want to minimize, the error we want to minimize. And they are conflicting with one another, right? If, if the court is, you know, like it's charging anyone comes to the court, then you can reduce this one, but then you'll expand this one. And this is the same logic here. But the point I wanted to get out, there is one error worse than another. And the error that is worse, we always, we control it. We try to control it. We try to make it minimal. Well, sometimes because to keep it minimal to a certain level, sometimes you need to relax this one a little bit, accept a little bit of, of this one, right? And if you 
carry this discussion to why I started this example, because I wanted to talk about inclusion and exclusion error. All I would do here is, this is like the individual is poor or not poor. Oh, sorry, poor. So the, is the household is poor, yes or no? Did they receive benefit or not? Like your design. Does it conclude that that individual is uh, should receive a benefit or not? So the worst thing you wanted to let me look at it here. The worst thing that you wanted is somebody really in dire need for support from your policy intervention, and you exclude them. This is exclusion error is very bad, right? To exclude somebody deserving, somebody you know, like a child that uh, should have benefited from the government uh, and now is not benefiting and that can cause malnutrition, can cause many and also social ill because people will start, as we discussed in the previous uh, session, start distrusting the government. They think the government inefficiency, they translate it into, you know, like there is political agenda or supporting ethnic group or whatever, right? So in social policy, we should, you know, common sense, again, we're using rationality, but we we'll look at evidence. In common sense, we should control this one. We should try to minimize it. Right. And it, you might, you know, add to this one, it's bad, but we will find a way how we minimize this one and then we also correct for this one. That's what we will try to do. But the reality of the, uh, the idea of a proxy means testing, I talked about it last time, you know, like how complex that complexity lead to high exclusion error. Remember when I said it's complex, the poor, they don't have enough information or how to deal with this complex system. They cannot produce the documents needed to be eligible. They're very poor. The lack of education that translates into lack of ability to maneuver the system or not aware of the system. So, uh, so the idea we see in proxy means testing we need to uh, minimize this but actually it exaggerates this the pro uh, and what i say the proxy means testing there's means testing you target the poor based on income and this is you see it in countries with high data you know countries that there is formal sector then you can to some extent know how much uh, the majority they earn, and then you can target. But the reality is that many countries, they don't have uh, a high level of formality. In low-income countries, the average informality in the labor market is 84%. Uh, the informality is 84% on average. In uh, middle-income country, the formality is about uh, 50%, so half of the population formal. So you don't have enough data. When you don't have enough data, the idea the World Bank promoted this for a long time is to use a proxy means testing. So you, the questionnaires I mentioned to you, so many questions. But the price for this is that you increase exclusion error, we, which remember that we said exclusion error is the worst one. It's like sending an innocent person to jail. It's the same thing, you know, a child not receiving the benefit because of... Uh, of uh, other issues so and somebody would say maybe i'm exaggerating but this is a reality if you look at the most uh, celebrated uh, cash transfer programs and in middle income countries like uh, 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 opportunidad and uh, bolsa de familia in mexico and in uh, in brazil where this uh, mushrooming of social protection uh, cash transfer started you see that the uh, opportunidad program you know one evaluation is uh, found that 70 percent and imagine 70% of the receipt of if you, if you target the poorest 20%, the uh, you missing them by 70%. So you missing the poorest 20% of the population. And the uh, same result you can find it in familia, uh, de familia. Same thing, you know, like uh, uh, this is a developmental pathway. They've done lots of evaluations, and this evidence started coming where we see the same results found in many countries like Bangladesh, Indonesia, Rwanda, many countries, and so many countries that I, I mentioned to you in Zimbabwe, in so many countries. It's simple, it's logical. Once you make it complex, you're gonna miss your target. Why complex will push away the very poor? The very poor will not be able to produce documents. They will say, okay, I'm not gonna bother to try to get it. So again, we need to make our choices correct. Uh, we need, as if you remember, to reduce this one, but at the same time, also, uh, when you reduce this one, uh, try to control for this one. And I'll take you to the example how it can be done. So the point here is to we'll look at it later on in more details, but the idea is this one, you can control for it. You say, I will uh, tolerate maybe 5% maximum or not at all. And this one, will expand. 
this one will expand and then we'll say I will correct the inclusion error you know rich people receiving the benefit I will correct it with the taxation sale and let's look at it let's look at this example how we can you know control exclusion error we need to control it because we said it's very bad uh, similar to sending an individual an innocent person to jail because very bad we need to control it but then correct for the inclusion error by taxation I want you to think about this example in wherever you are you know what country you are in or just in wherever you are just think of this example let's look of a poor household and rich household Think, put your numbers, don't use my numbers, I'll put numbers, but put your numbers, you will find the same conclusion. I'll put my four, uh, numbers, let's say a poor household making 2000, household living in poverty, I'm using maybe Canadian example here, uh, to just like an example, 2000, and maybe a rich household, let's say they're making uh, 10,000, right? I mean, use your number wherever you are low income country in your local currency don't translate it into dollar it's just as we move on use your number right hopefully you are using your number but think about the poor household how many children even if they are equal even if the rich have more children it will be the same result but i'll use that poor usually have more children and poverty is correlated with the higher number of children in across many countries but use your country. If your country, they are equal, rich and poor, put equal number. You're going to get the same result. Now, total entitlement. Let's give, you know, we, we don't, because this is, you're going to give uh, children, you know, it might be too expensive. Let's make it 100, you know, small amount. Because this household, they have four children. They will get 400. This will get 200. And this is here when everyone starts screaming. Are you going to give the very rich uh, uh, money? Are you going? And, uh, and we need to remember in economics, there is no free lunch. There is no free lunch. Somebody has to pay the bill. Why are we doing? We're giving the rich and poor because we wanted to avoid exclusion error. Remember, exclusion error is uh, horrible. So we need to give the children because children and household with children, they are under pressure, poor or rich. You know, you go to school, you know. So we need to give, you know, children, but we need to use tax. We shouldn't stop here. It's unfortunate many activists in this field, they stop here. They start, you know, like uh, for a good reason, you know, because they wanted the eff efficient, uh, uh, like, uh, like, or the system to reach to the poor. They will start saying, are you giving the rich? Are you giving the rich? We need to say that relax because we're controlling for exclusion error. We need not to have exclusion error. We don't want to leave any child behind. Every child has to be counted. But what we will do, we'll use taxation. There is no free lunch. You need to impose tax. So let's say this is funded by any form of tax, if even a regressive tax like sales tax. The rich, because they consume more, they will pay more. Any form of tax, let's impose 5% tax. Any form of tax will work. Even if the rich, we uh, tend to pay less, they pay less in absolute number, but in, uh, in, in percentage, but not less in absolute number in absolute number they consume lots of imports and imports they have higher taxes they consume you know like the things that has higher uh, uh, tax level and they you know they even if the sales tax is uniform for every group they will uh, buy much more uh, clothes and other things that will be higher tax even if they like the, they don't pay good percentage so if you impose five percent five times two thousand here we, it will be uh, five two thousand. You'll give you'll take one hundred, and this is minus, and this is five uh, times ten thousand. It will be uh, uh, five hundred. Again, regardless the form of tax, any form of tax will uh, will uh, do it. Will do the same trick. But now let's look at monthly income. If you now combine this poor household, they have or household lives in poverty, it's better to, than to say poor household. This household lives in poverty, they get 2,000, their income is 2,000, they get 400, they, the, so the end result will, will, will be 2,300. And the end result for this household, the rich household, they get 10,000 income, and then they receive 200 from the government when everyone started screaming, are you giving the rich, are you giving? But they pay tax, 500, so the end result will be 9,700. So in other words, here you give with 300 subtraction, the net uh, gain is minus, and this house will get this. So it's regardless what you do, it end up in the net transfer. 
again regardless the type of tax and even the number of children they are equal or not equal anything this is this is the logic and this is why you know here in canada you know uh, the child benefit the, the universal child benefit when it, it was introduced 100 dollar you know the rich will uh, get it but at, at the end of the day you know like uh, if somebody is making uh, uh, income of above 100,000 will pay 30,000 uh, for 100,000 so imagine 30,000 you pay tax in 30,000 dollar and you get happy for 100 dollar so the point I wanted, you know, many times the issue of, of, uh, of targeting, it becomes because we always we think of the government, as we discussed in the past, as a charity organization. It should only give those miserable looking uh, people. And this is very dangerous. The government is developmental. It invests on children because they are children. It's not because they are only poor, but because they're children and children, they should, you know, like get uh, benefit support families. Having said that, we want to keep this in, 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 in our, uh, our mind. For practical reasons, it's much easier to administer a program like this. It's very complex. Uh, remember the complex questions. This is, does not ask so many questions. The age is not something you can fake. You know, you cannot fake the age, you know. Yeah, maybe somebody six years old can say I'm five years old, but it's not going to be sick, uh, uh, widespread, you know, like it will be within a reasonable uh, level. And the other point is, related to multiplier uh, effect. Now, this household was making 10,000, they reduced to 9,700. They're not gonna reduce their consumption. They're not gonna reduce their consumption because they used to get 10,000 and now 9,700. They will not even notice it, the same consumption level. But this household now was making 2,000, now they become 2,300. 300 is a lot, is 15% extra income, 15% increase in their income. The reduction here is 3%. The 3% will not change much, but the 15%, what will happen? They will go buy things. Even if they buy whatever, you know, it creates multiplier effect in the economy that will create this stimulus in the, in, in the economy. So again, the point I wanted to say, because exclusion error is very important to control. So let's control it and let the tax correct for the rich that they receive money. Let the, uh, let the uh, uh, tax system be the one that is designed to correct for the inclusion error. And what last thing, you know, what I've been in those two sessions is, you know, uh, we said we need to go this way. We say, I agree. I know that many people will say oh, we cannot afford it or how. So next session, we'll look at how, you know, how we can uh, do it in a way that we can afford it. Again, affordability is, is a choice. Affor affordability is something we need to think about. If it's not affordable, it doesn't mean that you need to do charity. The government, the last thing wanted to do is to create an incentive structure for people to, uh, uh, to be not working. It has to be developmental. So even if you have little amount of money, you can design your program in a way that can actually do better uh, than, you know, like creating exclusion error and division in the site and stigmatization. So next time, the question how next session we will uh, try to, uh, to, to look at it in logical way as well.